you know, you're going to recognize our next speaker because he has been a familiar voice on the radio for over 40 years. He, I, you started when you were like five, didn't you? About five years old. Um, Michael Libby weaves his experiences as a business talk show host and owner of a full service advertising agency into all of his programs. Michael doesn't just talk about social media, marketing, and business growth. He lives it every day. Um, he is really brilliant. You're just going to really enjoy him. Please help me welcome to the store, to the stage. <laughs> Let me do that again so it's good for the video. Please help me welcome to the stage, Michael Libby. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I want to date her too. <laughs> welcome. Thanks so very much for being here. I'm so grateful that you guys have taken the time to come here and listen to all of these speakers, very talented individuals who can fill your events with magic. And also thank you, Angela, for the opportunity to be here today. You know, on the way here, I have this philosophy. If you could change your have-tos for get-tos, what a wonderful world that would be, right? If you could, if you could be the kind of a person that says, I don't have to go to the store, I don't have to go to work, I don't have to go pay the bills. What I get to do is I get to go to the store, I get to pay the bills, I get to go to work. Wow, I saw that person today on the way here. She was driving a dark blue Maxima, the windows are rolled down, this is five minutes to seven this morning. I suspect she may have been in healthcare. The, the, the windows go down, and she is grooving to some great music and singing, you know, going down the highway like this. I said, I want to meet this woman. This is the kind of a person that I want to hang out with. Because why? She gets to go to work. She gets to listen to her broadcast or to her music, and she gets to have a great time. You heard in the introduction that uh, I'm a principal at an advertising agency. So what the heck does that mean, anyway? Well, an advertise we're a group of independent individuals who come together on special projects to help our customers create wonderful things to make consumers purchase them. And, and so sometimes consumers are not a very happy lot. So you have to be able to make sure that you're answering what their needs are versus answering what the business needs are. The business wants sales, of course, but how do we go about creating something that is absolutely wonderful in the minds of these consumers or in others? Well, we do all kinds of things. We do the packaging, for example, from everything from dog food to lawn and garden supplies. But, but let me tell you a little bit about that. It's not just the packaging that we do, but it's all the work that goes into that to understand what consumers are thinking, what they want, and if we, have you ever been to a grocery store? Yeah? Been to a grocery store? In 25 or 30 feet, you've got all kinds of competing products. If you're in the dog food aisle, for example, at the high V, the 60,000 square foot high V over in Urbandale, Waukee, or in Ankeny, you're going to see, <laughs> they have three, by the way, you're going to see like all of these competing brands in the same aisle. How do you differentiate one from the other? It starts with the whole pre-packaging plan. And, and this takes, you know, it can go from a, a year of research to the final printed product before you get there. It's absolutely fascinating. Of course, we do print advertising as well uh, for, for uh, various clients. We also do television, video, film. This was shot, <laughs> we did, uh, we were doing a TV commercial at Living History Farms here in Des Moines. It was the 30th day of December and it was 11 degrees. We were there for four and a half hours. Yeah, it's the glamorous life of advertising and marketing. Um, so we do all of that to make these shoppers get them out of the doldrums and really love the brands that we work. That's the beginning. That's what I do for a living. Sometimes folks think they know about advertising because they've watched commercials on TV. But we get to live this each and every day. It's our craft. It's what we do. We don't guess at anything I'm about to share with you. It's what we do. Let me tell you the story about the Urbandale City of Urbandale is about 60,000 people that's contiguous here to um, Des Moines. And they hired our firm to go out there and find things that were what? Unique about Urbandale. 
you got a slogan like Uniquely Urbandale, something better be unique about what it is that you have. So our firm was hired to go out there and find these news stories and then deliver them to about 40 different reporters in the region. Hopefully we were going to get some earned media. You know what earned media is, don't you? It's free time on the air without somebody coming into your front door and shooting somebody. You know, this is the good media, not the bad media. So we went to work and found that there's 37 different languages spoken at the Urbandale High School, 37 different languages. Can you imagine that? It's the lowest property tax community in the metro. It's the only community in the metro that actually reduced property taxes by a penny fiscal year 2013, and billions of dollars of international trade is done in Urbandale. Whoa. Pretty unique. Crafted these stories, did the press releases, did the videos, and sent them out to all kinds of people. Nobody picked up on anything. Oh, well, other than the Des Moines Register, and that's probably because I do a regular marketing and advertising column for their online edition, and they felt sorry for me. But nobody in broadcast media did any of that stuff. So we had to go back to Urbandale after about four months and say, sorry, no earned media, nobody was really interested. I called the leading uh, station here, the uh, uh, CBS affiliate, I said, Dave, what are we, chopped liver? These are good stories. He said, Michael, you've been in broadcast news for years. You understand what this is. We only have 12 minutes and somebody got shot on the south side, somebody got ran over on Interstate 80. If it bleeds, it leads. We don't have time. So what did we do? We said, sorry, Urbandale, we can't do that. And we created the only business broadcast in the region. We went to the Des Moines Radio Group and said, hey, if nobody's going to talk about the small to medium-sized businesses, let's us do it. Let's do national, regional, and local business stories, and then invite people to come in and talk about their stories. Sure, Meredith will get press, Principal will get press, Wellmark will get press, but did you know that Thelma's Treats, an ice cream sandwich place on the shops of Roosevelt on 42nd Street, just had their business exceed by over 300% in just 12 months. Tres Mendes is a salsa that two brothers the Campos brothers make in their mother's kitchen. That's where they started out at a year and a half ago. Today, they are delivering to over 250 stores in a 200-mile radius of Des Moines. Who knew this stuff? Nobody. So we tell the stories about what goes on in the business world. So that's my second business. My third business is what I get to do here today. I get to speak to you about all kinds of different things. I'm going to give you a small sampling of some of those items. Somebody asked me the other day, how long have you been doing public speaking? Well, I've been in broadcasting for 40 years, and I thought, well, does that count? I, probably my first speech was in broadcasting. 35 years. And this is my first showcase. I've never done this before. I was very nervous today. <laughs> until I saw the woman in the blue Maxima going, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Made me feel good. So what about this stuff? What do we talk about? One of the things is 5 and 24. And let me give you just a small snippet of what that is. Five things any business, any organization, any association can do in 24 hours or less that will maximize your brand. And remember, I'm not making this stuff up. I didn't read somebody else's book. This is what we do for a living. Let me give you an example of just two of those things. Is your website mobile? If your website's not mobile, guess what? Nobody. 50% of the people won't be able to find you because 50% of the web searches are done on what? These. And if your, vis if your site's not mobile, forget about it. Razorfish did a study two years ago that said 96% of the people that have a negative digital experience with your brand will never darken your door again. Can you kiss off 96% of the people? No. You've got to go mobile. Number two, can the clutter. If your About Us page reads like War and Peace, forget about it. Nobody cares. Consumers want to know what value do you bring to the transaction? What is it that you do and how can that value transcend to what they need? Do that. Do it on your website, do it in your radio commercials, your television commercials, your print ads. Can the clutter. Personal branding, I also talk about that. You know, I'm convinced that there's a reason that some people rise to the top and others don't. And I believe it's about personal branding. The soft skills that nobody teaches. What are those soft skills? How you comport yourself, how you dress, how you talk to people. You know, 
a, a mock turtleneck, blue jeans, and a, and a jacket worked for Steve Jobs. Does it work for that person in a cubicle down at principal? I doubt it very much. Thank you. I think that individuals rise to the top by the way that they comport themselves in public. Again, the words that you use, the social media skills that you have, the opportunity to speak, and, quite frankly, how you look. And it doesn't matter what shape you are. Make sure your shoes are shined and your pants are pressed. Personal branding will win the day. Social media, we don't talk about it, we do it. There are tons of social media things out there. What is your social media strategy? Do you have a strategy for your business or for your association? How can you utilize social media to go out there and really impact your brand? Do you need to be on all of these things? Absolutely not. Where is your, where is your customer? Where is your client? Where is your base? Are they on Pinterest? If they're on Pinterest, you should be there. If they're on Facebook, you should be there. If they're on Twitter, you should be there. If they're not, don't waste your time. So you have to know your consumer before you get to the rest of the story. And hyper-listening. That's how we connect with consumers. We hyper-listen. This is the first rule of communication. Not talking, but listening. Listen, let me tell you this really quick story. One of our clients is an agricultural firm, and what they do is they create pelletized lime and gypsum. Pelletized lime and gypsum, farmers utilize lime to neutralize the soil pH. Um, and, and it, because when soil pH is neutral, crops grow better, and the fertilizer you don't have to use as much. So they have this meeting. I love to go to sales meetings of companies because I sit there, I don't say a word, I just listen to what the salespeople are talking. Marketing people think that they know everything that's going on in the business that they work for, they don't. It's the salespeople and the receptionist. You really want to know what's going on? Ask the receptionist a question. They'll be able to tell you every time. So we're at this meeting and one of the salespeople says, hey, remind me to take a truckload of gypsum, pelletized gypsum, to the golf course. I said, why? What's going on? After the meeting, I said, what are you doing? He says, gypsum, found by Benjamin Franklin, by the way, loosens clay soils, allows the roots to go deeper, and this guy's been doing it for five years, has cut his water consumption by 30%. Really? I go to the golf course, I said, is this true? He says, yeah, look, look at the root system, and the, you know, all of these things. The next day, I'm at an agricultural meeting for the Department of Agriculture, and Lyle Assel is there. He's the water expert for the state of Iowa. And he says, for the first time in history, ladies and gentlemen, we not only have a water quality issue, we also have a water quantity issue. That day, I called the owner of the company and I said, you know what we need to do? We need to move from agriculture to lawn and garden and create products utilizing your core things and put them in retail spaces. And today, it's sold millions of dollars simply by listening and then Barry taking action. I'm an ad guy. We couldn't get away with this today. But an ad person, remember, more or less is more. And so when you're having the opportunity to speak or when you're having the opportunity to do marketing or when you're having the opportunity to have somebody in to talk to you about those things. Less tends to be more. My 12 minutes is up. Thank you very much.